Hey, what's going on, folks? Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, two of the videos I posted in the last few days. Um, I got so many emails and uh, requests to, to clarify some of the information. The two videos were uh, short videos with Luca and Mango, my two Malinois, Luca being the old one, Mango being the baby, you know, coming for the bite sleeve. And I'll tell you why I did that. Um, I explain a little bit in the videos, but let's go a little deeper into the questions that so many of you had. Um, first of all, Mango is 10 months old now, I think, just turned 10 months old. And um, she's a really great dog. I'm really happy with her. Very grateful to to John and Paul at Mohawk Malinois because both Luca and Mango come from Mohawk Malinois. She's exactly what I wanted, okay? So when I got Luca, I wanted a dog that had a little too much of everything, and that's what he is. He, he He's a beast, he's extremely intense. And with Mango, I wanted something a little different. I wanted a dog that, that had everything I wanted, but just a little more not so insane. And she, she's perfect, right? She's exactly what I wanted. So um, I'm very happy with where Mango is at in, in all of her training, okay? And very, very happy. And I've pretty much brought out all of the speed I can out of her when it comes to, to the bite, right? So I always look for that little extra edge to make my dogs better or, or my clients' dogs. You know, you always look for, for that little extra to make things better. So what I did was I decided to start utilizing Luca. I can make Mango very fast. I could bring out, you know, her best for sure. But um, once I get to where I think I can no longer do any more, then I'll look to something different. And in this case, I think Luca was going to be a good asset. So, and what I'm going to do guys at the end of this video, I'm just going to include those two videos All right, I will make this all one video so you can compare the two. So in the first video, I put Luca and Mango down at one end of my yard side by side. I get to the other end with the bite wedge. And basically it's going to be a race to get to the bite wedge. Who's going to get the bite? Um, so I know right from the start that Luca is going to get there first. He's an extremely fast dog, but more important, he's going to put absolutely 100% of everything he has into everything he does. For example, when we first came out here and I put them in a down when we were getting the camera ready, you know, my wife goes, you know, she said, oh my God, look at him. What is wrong with him? You know, I put them both in a down and Mango is laying there nice and calm and relaxed like, okay, I'm ready to work. And you look at Luca and he's shaking and trembling out of his skin because he's just so ready to go to work. So two very different personalities. Okay. Very, very different. So we set him up. I hold the bite wedge out. Um, and it's going to be a race to see who gets the bite first because I want Mango to lose to Luca. I know she's going to lose to him, but that's going to bring out more drive and more energy out of her. It's going to bring out frustration also, which to lead to the next part of what I'm going to talk about is where I got most of the questions. I put Mango's e-collar on before we did this, and here's why. You guys that know me know my dogs, once we're past the training phase and they get a little older, you'll very rarely see my dogs with an e-collar on just because I, I really don't need it with them at, at, at a certain point, you know. But Mango is, is still young and she still makes plenty of mistakes. And to be honest with you, she's tested me more than any dog I ever had. Like she will just look at you and give you the middle fingers at times. Not so much with me anymore, but like with the rest of the family, she's getting better, but very, very hard headed she could be. So you guys have seen in other videos that when I play ball with them and she's chasing Buddy and Luca, whatever, she'll get frustrated when she falls behind and she'll go to bite them. I've corrected that behavior before with the e-collar, but never a harsh correction. Always low-level corrections, okay? But in reality, doing that, it's going to stop it uh, at for the moment, but it's not going to stop it permanently, all right? So today I decided we're going to stop that permanently. She's old enough. The foundation is laid. It's very strong. She very literate to the e-collar. You know, there's, there's no questions there that if I have to correct her for something, even harshly, there's not going to be any negative blowback. I, I, I know this a hundred percent. Um, I've been doing it a long time. And, and for people that know me, you know, I'm a pretty light handed trainer. I, I've never been accused of being a heavy handed trainer. 
You know, you have people that criticize me because they say I'm a food trainer. And then you have people that criticize me because they say I'm an e-collar trader. So that's good. That's good when you get it from both sides. That means I'm somewhere in the middle, right? So I set them up. She's got her e-collar on. I know what she's going to do once she loses. So I give them the, the command, the bite command. They come real fast and uh, Mango did good. She, she hung with Luca pretty good, but of course Luca got to the sleeve and as he runs away with the sleeve, she follows. And then if I remember correctly, she might've backed off for a second then went back in and she went to lay a bite on Luca out of frustration. At that moment, I corrected her and I corrected her harshly because at this time I'm going to stop this behavior permanently. All right. Now, when I say harshly, um, I use the mini educator on all dogs I train, including my own. Um, I had the e-collar set on a 40 out of a hundred. Okay. So a 40 to a lot of dogs isn't harsh. Okay. But I understand my dogs and that's, what's important guys. You have to know the dog you're working with. I knew a 40 would be plenty for mango. Um, I've never had to correct Luca harshly ever for anything. I've never had to correct Bruno harshly. You, you know, it, it's just something I don't have to do. Mango is a little different story. She'll, she'll push it. Okay. So today was the day I end that behavior. So when she went in for the bite, I corrected her harshly on a 40. Again, not very harsh, but it is to her. She let out a yel little yelp and went away from him, right? Not head down in the dumps, no negative blowback, none of that. She just, you know, just walked away and, and, and she was fine. It's very, very important that people see what she looked like after the correction. Now, with that being said, you know, I didn't crank the e-collar up to 100 and then hold the button down for a long time and punish the dog that way. No, it was a split second, a little tap, bloop, that's it. At a level 40, made it very clear to her, don't do that anymore. I don't like it. And that was it. It was over. And I think I explained in the video what I just did and why. Okay. But I had so many emails about that. Nothing negative, but I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure, you know, people talk in these groups all the time. They like to discuss other people's work. You know, people that don't do anything, that don't show work. <coughs> Excuse me. But I had so many emails and questions and, and the biggest question, guys, everybody always wants to know, well, what number did you have it on? That's just not important. You know, it's the number that works. But in that case, to answer the question, she was on a number 40, which if you check it on yourself, it's not that high, right? So the whole purpose of that video, there were two, two reasons I wanted to do that. For one, to build mango speed and determination more and also to stop a behavior that I cannot allow. So anyone who has a problem with that doesn't have a problem with Luca being bit, and that's unacceptable to me. I'm always gonna step in and handle that so my dogs don't have to, okay? Because if I allow her to bite Luca, then the next time that may be a person or a child or another dog, and then things can get really ugly. So something like that, you have to stop that behavior immediately, okay? I let it slide a little bit with low level corrections when she was younger, but now she's ready to understand unacceptable, okay? And I'm very conservative with that, and that's why I wait. A lot of people would have lit her up at a much worse level when she was very young. I wait, like I said, I'm very conservative with that. So now the very next day, we do the same exact exercise, the same exact thing. Nothing is different except I do believe I did believe that she was going to be just a little faster than the day before and I don't have her e-collar on her because I wanted to show people that when you prepare the dog properly, you train the dog properly when the, the foundation is strong and it's laid and the e-collar work is proper and correct, you could do absolutely amazing things. So we do the same exact exercise, no e-collar. Um, I had a little ball on a rope in my pocket hidden. She didn't know I have it. We do the exercise. I release them to the bite and wow. I mean, Luca got it first, but this time Mango was right there. I mean, she just, you know, I snapped a, 
a still picture out of the video and you see her full extension flying through the air and just miss getting to it first. As a matter of fact, she was so close that I will no longer do that with those two because what's going to happen is eventually they're going to hit that sleeve, that wedge at the same time, and someone's going to get hurt. It's bad enough this time she rolled over several times because she threw everything into it. That's where the motivation comes to play. That's what I do. You know, one of the things I do to bring out the best in my dogs, and that's what I'm always trying to do, right? Again, no e-collar on, and we watched our reaction afterwards. What did she do? Nothing. She didn't go to bite him. She didn't do anything because she learned yesterday, I don't like that behavior. It's unacceptable. She knew she didn't have an e-collar on, and that goes back to another Thing I want to talk about. People fail when the dog doesn't have the e-collar on. Um, and in my opinion, if you have to have tools on your dog for compliance, then the dog's not trained. In my opinion, it just is. And that's why you rarely see any tools on my dogs unless I'm demonstrating something in the video, okay? So her response was perfect. It was beautiful. And she'll, she won't do that anymore. She learned. You know, it took a split second with the best tool available in dog training to fix that permanently. Luke is very grateful also, right? So once she didn't go in for the bite and didn't get frustrated and acted like a proper lady, I said, hey, Mango, I took out the ball. I said, good girl. I threw her her reward, thanking her. Good job. You did good, young lady. Okay, very, very important. Very, very important. And so I'm glad people got to see the comparisons again right after I'm done running my mouth here. We'll go right into both videos, okay? But you have to understand something, guys. There's so many myths in dog training. And, um, you know, I've been very, very vocal uh, of, about abusive trainers for a long time. I've been very vocal about improper use of the e-collar for a long time because it's a tool that I strongly believe in when used properly. You know, unfortunately, there's still too many that don't use it properly. And it makes it makes everyone look bad. It makes the tool look bad. It makes the industry look bad, you know. And, and so I show a lot of work, actual work, not the before and after, because I think it's important for people to see. So anyone who tries to criticize what I do, well, the, the work's out there. Don't pick one. You know, I'm sure there's going to be people who take that little clip, that little sound bite of mango yelping, and that's what they'll use. But hey, you have to, you know, go ahead and show all 400 and something videos of everything put together. You don't have a leg to stand on, okay? Um, the welfare of the animal always comes first to me, always. It, it just always does. But for the purely positive people and the, you know, force-free people that are so against these tools, there is no other tool on the planet that could have done what I did with Mango in that situation. Now, with that being said, if I didn't have the e-collar on her the first day, could I have stopped her from biting Luca? Absolutely, 100%. When she went in for the bite, I could have said no or leave it, and she would have stopped in her tracks. 100%, I guarantee it. The problem is it stops it at that moment. It doesn't stop it permanently. There has to be some form of punishment there that makes that behavior unacceptable, okay? Yes, I could have stopped it at that moment immediately, and eventually it would stop you know, she would stop doing it after enough repetitions. But, but guys, there's, it's not right to do that to the other dog. And um, you just, there is no other way other than the e-collar, the proper use of the e-collar and the proper use of punishment. Okay, when I say the proper use of punishment, because we, we do, we're, we still see way, way too much abuse of training, you know, and a lot of people, I think it's, it's not done out of, um, they're not bad people, bad trainers. A lot of them, some are, but a lot of them just don't know any other way. And they follow people that preach punishment over everything. And it's, it's just, listen, there's people that wrote me about this thing and they were shocked that I punished the dog because they thought I didn't use punishment. That's insane. The whole thing is it's, it's not the biggest part of my training program. I use very little punishment in my training program, not because I'm against punishment. It's just that the better you get at training a dog, the less punishment you're using. And that's, that's just a fact, you know, but besides the leash, the e-collar is the greatest tool ever made in dog training. And when used properly and humanely, you could do things that you can't do in, in any other way. 
no matter what anyone tries to convince you of, it's absolutely impossible. And it's a tool that can help keep dogs in the home. Otherwise, that would be put down. It's that simple. You guys saw what it did with Mango before and after. You saw her attitude. You saw her demeanor. You saw her tail still straight up. As confident as could be, there was absolutely no negative blowback. You understand what I'm saying? Very important. The proper use of the e-collar combined with proper punishment, it's a very, very powerful tool. Very, very powerful tool, okay? And, and so I hope that answers some of the questions. And listen, you saw how fast that little, little girl came in the second day. That's in one day, second try. And, and so, you know, it's my job to always bring out the best in any dog I'm working with, whether it's my own or my clients. And that's what I strive to do. And I'm not perfect, you know, but I hope that I'm a little better every day at doing so. And the reason I put out so much stuff like this you know, some may like it, some may not, but I do my best to just share what I, what I know. That's it. And I don't know everything, you know, but, uh, I'm hoping I save people a lot of time and the mistakes I've made over the years. I don't want everyone else to make, you understand what I'm saying? So now I'll go right in. I know this is long. Sorry. If you have more specific questions, you could ask them right here in the comment section. I'm going to attach both videos. The one we did day one where I corrected her, the one we did day, day two where I didn't have to correct her and she didn't have any tools on. All right. So I hope this helps. Thanks again for all the support. And if you have questions, post them right here in the comment section. All right, guys. Peace. Bye. Boy, Luca. Okay, guys. Check it out. Good boy, Luca. So what I'm doing right there is I have worked on Mango Speed for the bite as much as I can. I've brought out everything I could from her, okay? So now it's time to bring in my best student, Luca, who does everything full force. And now... If she's going to get the bite, she's going to have to compete with him. I'm going to start using Luca with a lot of things. She's going to have to up her game, all right? The other thing I did is right now Mango has her e-collar on because I knew she was going to give me another opportunity to fix a problem there, and that is that I knew Luca would get it, although she was a lot closer than I thought. She hung with him, but I knew out of frustration she would chase him and go for the bite. I have to let her know that is unacceptable. So I corrected that behavior immediately and I corrected it harshly. For one, she has to know that she cannot do that. And for two, Luca has to know that I will take care of it. He does not have to worry about that. That's part of the reason why my dogs will never get into a fight. I handle those situations. But I gotta say, the little lady came in a lot faster than I thought. She was neck and neck with them. Hey, Mango, get out of there. Very, very close, she did good. So now she's going to learn very quickly, even though she does come fast for the bite, if she's gonna ever get to bite the thing she likes to bite, she's gonna have to really bring it and you're gonna watch that speed go through the roof. I don't think it'll be long before she starts beating Luca to it. Peace. Good girl, Mama. Good job. Good girl, Mango. Good job, Luca. Good job. Okay, guys. I know it's windy, so I'll stand close here. So I just wanted to demonstrate. You guys saw me do this yesterday, right? I did it for a couple of reasons. I talked about it. You guys watched it. Yesterday, when Mango went in for the bite, I corrected her harshly with the e-collar. She has to know she can't do that. So today, I wanted to show you guys, there's no e-collar. Her reaction was very different. Actually, I think this time she was a little closer too to getting the sleeve with him. She really pushed it hard. But after the bite, nothing. She did not chase him. She did not bite him because she learned yesterday, okay? 
proper use of the e-collar is an invaluable asset in any training program and there's no other tool that could have done that what i did yesterday she won't do that anymore very very valuable okay very valuable proper punishment is also very important to an overall training program proper punishment being an asshole big difference proper punishment is necessary to an overall training program it's plain and simple so no force free or purely positive training could have done what i did yesterday not even close all the stuff i talk about especially what i demonstrated yesterday is very necessary if you want the best results the best best relationship with your animals and being able to give them the most freedom possible what they deserve you saw a complete show them stephanie where's mango over there there's luca over there very different results could i have gotten the same results with no tools yes it would have taken me a lot longer most people can't okay peace